Bernardo Franco, eh, fundador y CEO de la empresa GMOP. Y venimos a hablarles de este tema. Queremos que sea un tema que hablemos absolutamente abierto, que si alguien quiere interceder, alguien quiere opinar, lo que quieran, por favor lo hagan. Queremos realmente que esto sea interactivo y que nadie se nos vaya a aburrir por acá. Eh, voy a empezar por contarles rápidamente eh, qué es Musical, qué es lo que nosotros hacemos. Por, un, por este lado les presento a María. María es una compositora increíble. María tiene más de 80 canciones eh, bien producidas, bien grabadas, buena música de calidad realmente. María no tiene los contactos para llegar a comercializar su música eh, en temas publicitarios o en televisión o para, aún para, otros para que otros artistas posiblemente graben sus canciones. Tiene un catálogo el berraco, pero se queda como con las manos atadas. Ese es un problema que a muchos probablemente nos ha, nos ha pegado. Por el otro lado está el señor Pedro, y Pedro es eh, un tipo que trabaja en una compañía y que tiene una nueva marca que va a sacar al mercado. Y Pedro lo que quiere hacer es lanzar su marca eh, y su tema publicitario y tener el mayor impacto. Para esto, el tipo necesita hacer un comercial de televisión y necesita meter la música para la canción. Y... Tiene unos dolores de cabeza tremendos porque le toca llamar a mucha gente para poder conseguir la música, se le demoran con el servicio, no obtiene los contenidos musicales realmente que le está buscando según las características de su proyecto. Lo que Pedro no sabe es que María tiene esa canción perfecta para la marca de Pedro. No hay manera de que Pedro conozca a María, no hay manera de que se conecten. Como funciona la industria hoy en día es muy difícil que personas como María lleguen a este tipo de oportunidades porque simplemente no están, no están ahí. ¿sí? Hay una rosca muy tremenda que maneja este tipo de oportunidades. Entonces, ahí es donde entra Musical y Musical básicamente lo que hace es conectar a quienes buscan música para sus proyectos, como es el caso de Pedro, con quienes hacen música eh, como María, por medio de una plataforma tecnológica. Empresas, temas publicitarios, series de televisión, películas, videojuegos, cualquier tipo de necesidad musical por medio de Musical puede obtenerse de una manera mucho más fácil y rápida y les voy a mostrar cómo funciona. Básicamente el cliente entra a la plataforma de Musical, hace una solicitud de música con sus características y la envía. A los usuarios registrados les llega la información de esta convocatoria por medio de una notificación y ellos envían sus canciones postulando su música para participar. Esta música a su vez entonces le llega al cliente a su perfil, también por medio de una notificación, y ahí mismo puede escuchar las canciones que le están enviando los compositores y elegir la que le gustó, pagarla y punto. Eso es musical. Tratamos de que las oportunidades sean visibles, se pongan sobre la mesa y todos, todos tengan acceso a ellas. Los clientes van a juzgar por la calidad de la música, no por las roscas. Eso es lo que hacemos. ¿Cuáles son los valores agregados para el cliente? Recibe una propuesta mucho más amplia, mucho más variada eh, y de forma gratuita puede acceder a la plataforma. Tiene una ágil respuesta y él define los presupuestos. Y cuando él define los presupuestos, los músicos saben a qué se atienen cuando van a participar en una convocatoria. Y por el lado de los músicos, no ceden sus derechos como pasa normalmente. Esto es un tema de no exclusividad y no cesión de derechos para nada. Reciben y se dan cuenta de esas oportunidades que están por allá afuera que normalmente no están viendo y además pagan un menor porcentaje de comisión que el que comparten actualmente con las editoras tradicionales de música. Eso es lo que hacemos y ahora le doy el paso al señor Bernardo para que rápidamente nos cuente qué hace GMOP. Bueno, muy buenas tardes a todos. Eh, rápidamente les voy a comentar, GMOP es una plataforma cloud. Eh, lanzamos el beta público hace un poco más de un año, hace un año y medio. Eh, si quieres. Eh, cuando Zimap eh, nació realmente hace cuatro años, eh, pero el primer, la primera versión de Zimap fue una, fue una versión que no funcionó, fue un fracaso. Eh, y a partir de ese fracaso eh, tuvimos varios aprendizajes para lanzar esta nueva versión. Eh, en, en esa nueva versión pues, nos dimos cuenta que básicamente la producción global de música... Global is done by, I mean, 70% of the production 
is performed by independent musicians, emerging musicians who have no support of any our labels, and they do it everything through self-management. Seeing this, the main problem that this type of artists present is that they don't have the way to monetize their work because they don't have a loyal fan community willing to pay for the works uh, through concerts, merchandising, or the very music. That's like the main problem. Given this, what we did was to develop a cloud platform allowing the artist to capture a loyal fan base willing to pay for the content of these artists. This is basically a switch of tools uh, that go from uh, geolocalizer map of concerts that will allow musicians to get to be known to the new public and to discover artists that are performing near where the user of this application is. Offline formats for distribution that are more cheaper because an emerging artist does not have uh, resources and sometimes this is an investment that is not recovered. So we created this new tool all these tools are integrated in a personalized uh, website where, where each artist will be able to put their entire works without any intermediary. With uh, other tools, for example, are the very own store of the musician, and then some solutions that will allow the artist to do a private self-management of their work directly with their users. In the business model, we have uh, campaigns of uh, branded content, where the brand offers content to their clients through alliances with publishers, for example. In this case, was Sub Miller Winch with Shock. And we see that this type of tools not only help the musicians, but it is transversal to other types of uh, creators, such as writers or, and movie makers. Actually, we have a platform for emerging artists that is focused on in Latin America. I will show you a video of some artists that are using this platform. For me, it has been very positive. It has been a tool that has helped me here in Colombia a lot. The music industry changed. The big uh, labels are coming down. It is a lot of competition for the labels. We work with them generating this card that is a downloading card. We uh, give it away to our fans with a code that is uh, behind the card. Now you cannot just assemble an uh, industry or make a lot of investments so if you don't sell anything, we are in a crisis, right? Initially with GMAP I had some downloading cards that just we run out of like hard bread. This is for, I mean for the twins. It works. Well, basically that's what Jim Up is. During this talk, I will try to explain from our experience how we could launch the, this second version that has been validated and that already had a market value validation, starting with the, the learning uh, that we had in the first version that did not work. Now, we reintroduce ourselves, Mr. Colin Jim Up. I want to know something. Who of you are independent? They like us. They have uh, independent projects. Raise your hands. So we are most of us. All the uh, related to music, I assume. The musical artists or anything, we are all in the same way. So let's get into the topic of this uh, workshop which is 
worship and music, that's a really good idea. Those key steps to be able to make a good business in music with an IT base. First, we need the idea. In that sense, we who are in uh, music are too romantic. And we want to make a business around music is because we love music, because music is our life, is what we want to do. But when we want to make business around music, uh, we want to live out of that, and we want to work and generate an income out of that, we have to put romanticism outside, because uh, we cannot think that everything is going to work perfect because we are going to develop our art around music. So it is very important that from the starting point, the idea of the business is conceived as something that will solve a problem or fulfill a need for somebody. If what we will do is simply something that perhaps improves life for the people or helps them doing something a little better, we're do doing nothing. We have to do something that takes the headaches out of the people when we talk about an IT entrepreneur company. Well, as Santiago said, basically the idea we have, we have to focus on a big problem that a certain industry may have. What is the problem that is uh, presenting? And to, s to find a gigantic solution for that problem that will change the industry. And the market has to obviously be a big market, a big growing market. And, uh, and big enough to be able to be a global or regional startup. We identified the problem of the market in the first version. The problem at that time, four years ago, was that the emerging musicians had problems selling insights such as iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, or those platforms because they needed an aggregator, and there were no aggregators but in the US or, or in Europe. It was very difficult for an emerging musician, at least in Latin America, to be present in those sites. So we said, the solution here is to do some iTunes for the local scene so that our musicians could get there. At that time, four years ago, we didn't have too much knowledge of the industry. The knowledge that we have in the industry was uh, the traditional music of uh, the traditional labels, but those are two different uh, universes, the emerging music and the traditional music. What we did was to replicate the iTunes model. We enabled a platform for the local scenery where people could buy 99 cents a dollar music for from many emerging artists and was able to pay through different payment means. It did not work because it is a model that works for the artists, for the big labels, but not for emerging artists. It was a failure. We didn't get one sale, but it helped us learn. And from that learning, we came out with a second map uh, version. In the second version, what we did was what is called pivot in the startup world, which is change strategies without changing the vision. Our vision is to empower the emerging musician in Latin America. This solution uh, did not help. The problem continued to exist. The market continued to exist because the emerging musicians market is huge. So what we did was to pivot and to take this new version, what we call an FRM, Foreign Relationship Management, that will allow the artists to manage their, their work, starting with tools that we give the artists so that they can decide how they want to manage and be able to capture uh, fans organically so that they can monetize their work. At the end, that the, the 
And uh, the final point is to monetize the work. Well, after having an idea, we have the process of validating that idea. And to basically, it is to go out to the market to go and validate whether that idea that we have is a true business opportunity, if there is a business for the product or service that I want to offer. At this point, I am a number one fan of still not to do a lot of coding, a lot of IT platform development, but if I want to create an online musical instrument store first, validate that there are people who want to buy those instruments through this service. If I want to make an online platform of booking of for booking artists, validate whether there are people buying these services, etc., etc., whatever the business is. I am uh, in favor of going to the street, visiting clients, finding the pains and problems that the clients face before saying, I will make a platform for this or for that. When one understands that the clients have a pain and with the product or services that one is delivering, we are making them important and adding value and solving things. There you found that your idea is a business. You know that we have ideas every day. Nobody, somebody thought about something and one says, I, I thought about that before. But ideas have to be executed and validated. That is totally key. Well, our experience validating this, as Santiago says, is here. The first version, we launched a very robust platform that allowed all types of uh, situations. We took almost one year to develop to realize that it didn't work. That was our first lesson learned. The first thing you have to do is uh, an MVP, minimum viable product. Uh, in other words, not to devote resources in something that has to handle everything strategically. For the second version, we have an MVP minimally viable product and that minimally viable product we did with feedback from the artists, the musicians to gradually improve it. So an MVP is crucial for a technology business to produce an MVP and validate it in the market and validate it with the customers so that they can tell you if it is good for them if the solution you're providing them if it's the solution they need and based on the feedback they give you you can gradually improve this minimally viable product if you see that the market does not respond and says the solution you provide does not suit their needs what you do is piv pot pivot which is change the strategy without changing the vision. You can change the solution you're providing and choose another one that is more appropriate to what people need, but you still target the same market and the same problem you continue to address. After the issue of validation, we have the big challenge of being able to take the business online so that all the services and products you're providing and the offering can be transferred to a platform whereby your business can operate. This is very important, this issue of the development of the digital platform, whether it's a web or a mobile application, whatever it is, you, so that you can have the customer find in your platform an even better solution than the one you're giving the customer sitting in if you're sitting in front of the customer so that it's easier for the customer to do this through the platform so that you don't have to receive phone calls and visit customers all the time this is why we want to do businesses online so that they become platforms that can work by themselves and can rapidly grow and be even become extremely large
as you take the business to the online um, sort of area, then there is the issue of scalability. All of us who are doing uh, entrepreneurial work are told, we are told th there is a problem with the scalability of your business. What does this mean if you have a technology-based business, but you need to call customers and visit customers all the time tending to their needs. This means that the 24 hours of the day uh, are a, a period of time where you can visit at an X number of customers and you can't visit any more people beyond a certain number. This is important because when a platform is developed with the foundations that allow it to grow, then if this is possible, then your business won't need that many man hours to operate and to the degree that m your platform is more dehumanized, is the term used, then the more you can scale and have conduct business in other countries as long as the platform is scalable. Let me give you examples. Usher, founded by Andres Barreto, who sadly couldn't be here because two days ago he had to travel to Mexico. He was going to participate in this workshop. Well, this was a streaming platform and this is already working and people uh, come in and hear the songs and what they are focused on is in doing marketing and having more people realize what group share is all about and growing the business. They're not involved in the day-to-day -day in terms of how can I respond to this customer so that the customer can receive the song. That is what scalability is all about. So that this that we see in this screen is not something that has to happen. You are the commercial person and the other one is in charge of technology, and etc. With this we could reach any nation in the world. Now, as Santiago said here, this is a sentence that means act local, but think global. In the first version of Decimap, what we did was produce a solution designed here in Colombia because it w whatever would allow for music purchases with debit or credit card or prepaid cards uh, was fine, but beyond Colombia this would not work. In the second version we realized that for a startup to work it needs to have the potential of being able to reach any country. In the second version we therefore structured this file platform so that any artist from any country could enable services and this is how we have artists from 12 nations today not just from Latin America making use of the platform because based on the lesson learned from this first version we were able to structure this second version in a way that allowed us to have a more regional regional and global version of this platform. Now, obviously, the issue of resources, funds, money. Developing a technology-based business requires resources. And we entrepreneurs don't have a lot of money for a startup. It, at least in my case, I left my job and bet all of my funds on this and I know all of you are, are doing something like this because you bet on your music and you want your projects to come out ahead and sometimes this is extremely hard to do. There are different phases um, that w where a technology-based project may require resources. It may be initially when you have an idea and you need validation and certain funds to be able to verify if your idea can become a business and if there is a real opportunity there and there is where you can find seed capital people that can believe in you and believe in your talent and the uh, push that the person can demonstrate I want to bet on this person they can say up until we are talking about validated businesses based on their platform and what they need is investing in marketing and growing and reaching other regions where risk or venture capitalists can arrive and say, well, I'd like to purchase part of your company. Here are the funds you need for your company to grow. But now, though, I think that you could perhaps address the type of companies that are now supporting technology entrepreneurs 
in the case of our company, we've gone through an acceleration process with Guaira. Guaira is the support branch for technology startups of the Telefonica uh, group, and they have been in Colombia for several years, and they, are, they have their, their radar on ready to detect people with potential. They believe in people very much when they see people with talent and the desire, and they can give you support, funding, and uh, there are many other sort of incubators that can support startups and this help exists and sometimes we complain very much and say well there's just no money available for this yet this exists and what you need to do is work hard and try to uh, make use of these programs and this assistance that does exist and can help you develop your business. Uh, yes, basically, in the creation of a startup from the outset up until when you've already made an investment, uh, uh, you go through basically bootstrapping first, which is using your own resources, and what are called the three Fs. I don't know if anyone here has heard the three Fs, family, friends, and Foods because this is an idea that is not validated in the company and it may be risky to bet on an idea that may or may not work. Then comes seed capital when there is a small market validation. Then seed capital funding can be used and in Colombia these funds consist of the Emprender Fund, there's Impulsa also, there is the work they do supporting innovators and friends, and which requires certain regional scalability at for the re Latin American regional level. Right now, there are other possibilities available, government funding for these types of startups. Now, privately, there's AMSCO, GMAT, these are it's an other, another AMSCO initiative through the Ministry of uh, Communications and Telecommunications Industries, which helps startups, providing them guidance and other type of support. When the seed capital phase has been uh, traveled, then you are already generating invoicing and you need money to grow. Then, at that point, you may require uh, investment funds sources or investors in Colombia. In Colombia, the investment ecosystem is very incipient still, but there are several funds being established. There is Capital and Axon and several others that are already starting to invest in technology startups. Although, of course, this is still incipient. It's not the same ecosystem such as you may find in, for example, Silicon Valley in the US where there, where a startup can find many investment fund options to seek funds from, but we are nevertheless beginning to see this type of offering um, come into existence in Colombia. You need to take into account the fact that when a startup is seeking funds, it will find that investors are willing to provide them as long as they feel a reasonable certainty of growth at a certain pace, and whereby they can accelerate this growth through the investment made by the investors. Basically, this is, in general terms, the way this process of getting resources for a technology startup happens. Well, obviously, there is an element more than a step as well, which is indispensable in this case, which is the issue of passion. As Steve Jobs said, the only way to do great 
work is if you love what you do. And clearly all of us who are here love music, but if someone wants to enter a music industry business simply because you think it's a great opportunity to make money, I would say don't even get close because this is a serious roller coaster of a ride and if you're going to be involved in such stress as is entailed in establishing a company you're not and you're doing this thinking you're going to make money quick uh, just forget this and reconsider and don't do it because you're going to have a serious crash landing persistence is required everyone who is involved in music knows this this requires persistence and discipline sooner or later people with talent and people who do things right and who are hard working will see the results of this these efforts well this is it. I would like to invite you to ask your questions regarding this topic so that we can have a conversation here. There is no microphone being used for the question and so we can't translate it. So you're talking about is what is the GMAP is Latin America, what is the scope of music call? Is, does it include or encompass all Latin American nations is the question. Well, thank you for the, your question. Yes, mostly we have Colombian people from different Colombian cities, but we are also including people already from Ecuador, Venezuela, Argentina. Music Hall is a platform developed for the Latin American market, music market. We want to focus on Latin American music artists, and we have users and people as well from England, Spain, and some other European nations, but especially we are involved in this region. We have many people from Mexico. So in principle, it's music in Spanish that you're looking for? Yes, that is correct. In principle, music in Spanish. Now, this doesn't mean that if someone arrives looking for music in English, this can't be done by a Spanish-speaking artist who may perfectly well handle this topic. You know that music is a universal language, so this is something that applies in this broad sense as well. Thank you. Well, I don't know what the status of startups here are is like, but could each one of you give us a success story or a very representative case of Music Hall as well as G-Move? I'm um, especially unclear about the tools that uh, empower artists in Jimuk. Perhaps if you could show us a success story. Look, this artist was able to do this thanks to that, uh, etc. Yes, of course. Would you want to begin? Okay, in the case of Jimar, as I said, this, these are tools that empower emerging artists. One case specifically concerns an artist from Barcelona when they these artists launched a production, they uh, set it up in iTunes and Spotify to sell their music via those outlets. The problem was that in those platforms, you see the phenomenon called long tail, which is the fact that these emerging artists correspond to 20%, 80%, he corrects himself. No, he corrects himself again, 20% of what iTunes sells corresponds to emerging artists and 80% of their sales correspond to artists of the large labels and emerging artists will therefore never be able to monetize via iTunes because that artist is a niche artist. These are this artist in particular from Barcelona enabled the store. One of the tools we enabled was his own store or their own store to sell their music whereby they would keep 100% of the royalties and have total control over their work. When they sell via their own store instead of through other channels, in two weeks the sales were about $800, something which had not happened in iTunes, not even after having been there for a year. Why? Because fans purchase directly from the music store and directly receive the earnings and profits and they raise the prices. There are other cases as well, such as, for example, selling of merchandise. People who purchase music are emerging either because they're a fan 
uh, and there are true artists involved. The true artists increase transactions. They don't sell just one song at 99 cents. They can also sell other exclusive articles at $20 each, for example. So they increase the value of the transaction and are thus able to monetize much more in a very specific way. And as for me, what I can tell you about Music Call, we have two very recent, very successful cases, the musicalization of two video games. I know the topic of musicalizing video games is for some, well, there are people who do this, but for many it's like, oh, how cool it's to think of music for a video game, but how can I reach anyone about this? Well, we open to invitations to for proposals for uh, a Colombian video game and which has um, which is doing video video games for mobile uh, apps and we talked to them and told them let's uh, let us propose people who could propose the video game to you what they said to us initially will was well we are always working with the same people what happens to everyone this is how everyone works with one or two people they trust and that's it right? What we want to do at Music Call is open people's minds to m more possible sources of participation. So this invitation for proposals led to several proposals being sent to us. Several were very good and very different. And basically the video game developer in the end not only received Music Call proposals, but also from other producers people work with. And for both video games, he selected two Music Call producers, two producers who also hadn't necessarily um, done the music for complete video games, but had the tools and the know-how to do this. And what is required, especially the artistic preparation and artistic talent. So they were sent, the video games were musicalized, the customer is really happy, the musical producers are happy, and this happened, this just last, this this last month. So this is part of what is happening with Music Hall. I think we need to conclude. We have room for one more question. Okay. I would like to deepen a bit more on the notion of minimum viable product. Should this product be simply usable or should it be marketable? Because if we're talking about uh, this an internet data service that can be sold, people wouldn't find it too reliable. -ish. Can it, Need, does it need to be usable or actually marketable? Well, this basically consists of producing something that you can show to your potential customer, but which is not necessarily the end product ready for marketing, rather to receive feedback from your potential customers. And based on it, on this feedback, you can then continue to improve it and through successive iterations produce the final version, which is the one that is more ready to be marketed. Well, okay, if this is it, then thank you all very much for being here with us. In truth, we would like to thank you for your participation. Thank you very much. Team up uh, as well as Music Hall are pro-independent, pro-breaking traditional barriers. We would like to invite you to visit Music Hall as well as GMAP. Look for us, write us. We can talk and the Ministry of Culture is next. Thank you very much.